Talent Talk Tuesdays is all about harnessing your God-given talents to live with greater clarity, purpose, and joy. You are wonderfully made, my friends. May all we do be for God's glory. Hello, my friends. It's great to be back with you. This is Talent Talk Tuesdays. And uh, today I'm going to start the first in a short series of freedom stories is what I'm calling them. And they're stories from actual client experiences. And I want to make it just completely clear that I never share anything without written permission, but I don't divulge anything that will identify them so clearly that they could be named. Um, so I coach people all over the world and all over the country. Um, so I just, uh, I think it's really important for you to know that, that I'm protective of them, but that they've generously agreed to share their learnings. And so I hope that they'll be a blessing to you. Okay. So today's first freedom story is about a ministry leader who I'm going to call John. And this is a guy with a lot of experience, many years in youth ministry, who is well known and respected locally. Um, and at the time of our coaching relationship, he was in charge of youth ministry for a large American diocese. But despite his success and his excellent reputation, John had labored a long time under a profound worry and feelings of shame. John was hiding something from his family and from his colleagues, and it was making him chronically anxious. John was burdened by the conviction that he had OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. Now there is nothing to be ashamed of if you've actually got OCD, but John didn't have it. He thought he did because he had what he thought were quirks, right? Embarrassing quirks. He took notes continually about everything. He planned in great detail to the nth degree, dotted every I and crossed every T meticulously. So when we started to look at his Clifton strengths, he discovered that he had two talents that Gallup calls consistency and discipline. You can find more information about these talents at the Gallup YouTube channel. Look at Theme Thursdays. They're awesome. Or at their website, gallup.com. I also highly recommend this book, which is Discover Your Clifton Strengths. That's uh, Strengths Finder 2.0. It's terrific. It goes through every single one of the 34 talent themes. So anyway, John and I start to break open his report and coach through it, and he's starting to really connect specifics of his own life and his experiences and his capabilities with the descriptions of those two talents in particular. And this sense of false shame melting away was really extraordinary and moving for him because he realized, no, he, thank God, wasn't struggling with a mental illness. He was really talented. And not only was he, uh, through his consistency, really good at establishing best practices and communicating clearly and consistently with his team, he was great at setting up schedules and goals and really spelling out clear expectations so everybody on the team could succeed. Amazing talents, right? But he had this incorrect idea about them. He was also really gifted with treating everyone with kindness and fairness. So it was a little mind blowing for him to start to get clarity. And he said to me, I'll never forget it. This is a very accomplished, highly respected guy. And he said, Lisa, I feel confident for the first time. Confident for the first time. Imagine having talents that powerful. Many years of success in a position as important as his in one of the largest dioceses in the country, and for years being embarrassed by those talents. But that's not uncommon. A lot of us labor under false shame and false identity, and it holds us back from fully saying yes to God. So here's what happened next. A couple of weeks after we first uh, went through consistency and discipline and his realization that these were talents and not signs of mental illness, we talked again. So John, who had often sounded anxious to me on the phone, that day just sounded light and happy. And I said, John, you sound so different. You sound free. And he said, I am free. Lisa, here's what happened since we last talked. My bishop out of the blue called me up and asked me to make a report of the best practices in our diocese for youth ministry. For years, my dream has been to create a set of best practices in youth ministry so that every parish can succeed. And here I am at this moment when I'm recognizing that I was made to do this work, that this desire to create best practices has been part of God telling me that he's calling me to do it. And at this moment, the bishop is directing me to create best practices for the whole diocese. <laughs> it was just an incredible moment of sharing this victory with him. 
we were so happy, just elated. And he was liberated to finally really fully say yes to God without this burden of false shame. I'm telling you the story because we all do carry some false shame and false labels on our talents. Some of those labels were given to us along the way by well-meaning loved ones. You talk too much. You're too, you know, get your head out of a book, whatever, out of the clouds. Like we, we just hear these things along the way and they imprint on our sense of self. People don't mean to hurt us as badly as they do. But some of them we even put on ourselves because of our life experiences that were shaming or times we even may have misused our gifts. But remember that with knowledge of our gifts and sacramental healing, we can push back against that spiritual enemy who loves to get in our heads and stop us from living as lights on lampstands that we are called to be. In John 10, 10, Jesus tells us we're supposed to be that bright shining city on a hill, the light of the world. That's not ego. Again, go back to my introduction for an explanation of what, how I come to this work. This is all about giving glory to God, of it being in this humble place of boldness before the Lord, before, for his sake, for the sake of the church. So we can operate with a whole lot more freedom, confidence, and joy in God's design in the ways he prepares us through our training, through our life experiences, and the ways he calls us forward at exactly the right time. God's timing is amazing. So to be clear, I'm not talking about healthy shame. That's actually a gift. It's that check in with our conscience that helps draw us back to God again and again, right? Got a witness right here for reconciliation and healing. But what we want to do is to start asking God in prayer, where am I burdened by a misunderstanding of your beautiful design in me? And then do whatever he tells you. All right. I hope this has helped you today, my friends, to just consider what is it about my design that might be needing some clarity so that I can thank God, be grateful for that design and and notice where it dovetails with what I'm sensing in terms of God calling me to that greater purpose. We might ask ourselves questions. What are my quirks? Right? The things that maybe I'm a little embarrassed about or people have pointed out because maybe I didn't use them well or maybe because people just were uncomfortable with my gifts. Also think about what energizes me and what do I daydream about doing for the Lord? Those are all clues, bring them to prayer. So I'm gonna tell a bunch more freedom stories over the course of this podcast series. I'm gonna try to keep them all short because I know you're busy. And I just ask you to pray about them. Next week, I'm gonna talk about another freedom story, a woman really empowered by a strength called empathy. And we talk about empathy a lot in our culture, but this is what Gallup describes as empathy, just to be clear, because I'm Gallup trained. But she thought it was a shameful weakness. She hadn't identified it. She was noticing certain things in her life and really struggling under the burden of that. So uh, tune in next week. I hope you'll join me. And thanks for listening. You are wonderfully made, my friends. Uh, I'm praying for you. Please pray for me too. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.